Hello, YouTube. Welcome back to KLA Sports. I am your host, Kyle Alexander. And uh, this is the last day of 2019, the last day of the 2010 decade. So I figured, why not go out with a bang? So for this episode, I'm going to be I'm going to be discussing my 2010 NFL decade team. And they're going to pop up on the screen there. I'm going to tell you guys why I think uh, why they're on my decade team. Now, I know I left, left out some people, but these are based off of stats, accomplishments, like whatever stuff they did. So, yeah, we're just going to hop right into this video. First up at the quarterback position, uh, my quarterback is Tom Brady of the New England Patriots. Um, he had seven straight 4,000-plus uh, 4, yard seasons, nine straight Pro, Pro Bowl nominations, uh, two, he's a two-time NFL MVP in 2010 and 2017. Uh, two first first team All Pros. Yeah, and he's also a three-time Super Bowl champion. He won. So the New England Dynasty has won uh, half of their Super Bowls in the 2010s, of course. And he's a two-time Super Bowl MVP in the year 2015 and 2017. Tom Brady is arguably greatest quarterback of all time, and he showed he shows that. No, uh, he mainly shows that in this decade, in this 2010 decade, he's been dominant, and um, he's just been. It is like he's been dominant, and people have questioned like, uh, like a couple years ago, people started questioning, oh, this is Brady's downfall year, but he shows once again that it wasn't as he just won the Super Bowl last year, and people thought that was the end of them. Man, yeah, Brady, uh, not the most athletic quarterback, but he's definitely uh one of the smartest and he just moved up the second on all time in the passing pa passing touchdowns list and that's why tom brady's the quarterback on this decade team next up at the running back position i have adrian peterson he's a four-time pro bowler 2012 mvp offensive player of the year and comeback player of the year uh, adrian peterson was just one of the he was the best running back of this decade one of the most dominant running backs of our time of my generation like the best running back I've ever seen play. Uh, he's 2010. Uh, he's a 2010 rushing, uh, 2010 decade rushing touchdown leader with 73. He had a 2000 yard season in 2012, and, and he was second in the 2010 dec 2010 decade yards with 9,654. He's a two time first team All Pro, and. Uh, he had that incident where he was like out the league for a bit, but he had that resurgence with the Redskins. And with the Redskins, he's been moving up on the touch on the all time rushing touchdown list. I believe he's four now. I believe he's fourth now. I know he just um passed somebody, but he's uh, I know he's definitely top five. Now, Adrian Peterson is definitely one of the most dominant running backs, but best running back, best most dominant running back I've seen play. And that's why he's on this decade team. Next up at fullback, uh, I feel like this is a hard position to do just because, like, they mainly block. Uh, I feel like fullback was kind of hard because, like, I don't really know how to judge it. But that's why I just said Kyle Uzcheck. Uh Four straight Pro Bowls, 1,740 scrimmage yards and nine total touchdowns. Eight of them are rushing. He's arguably the best full. He is the best fullback in the game. Mm, he can run the ball. He's good at running the ball. He can, he can go out and catch a little too. But he's definitely a great. He's definitely a great blocker, and that work works the San Francisco scheme, and that's why he's on his decade team. Like I said fullback was hard to do because I didn't know what to judge off, but uh, yeah. All right, next up at receiver, my first receiver is Calvin Johnson. Yep, Megatron is my number one receiver. He has uh, eight thousand five hundred forty-eight receiving yards in the decade, sixty-two receiving touchdowns. Six straight Pro Bowls, uh, and he also had three three straight first team All Pro uh, nominations. Um, six, he had six straight first team. Oh no, six straight a thousand yard season. Excuse me, and uh, he also set the single season receiving yard record with one thousand nine hundred sixty four yards. Yeah, Calvin Johnson, um, definitely the best. I feel he's the uh, between him and Julio, definitely the best receivers of this generation. And Calvin Johnson is just—he's definitely one of the better receivers I've ever seen. He was just dominant. He had the big frame. He had the big frame. He was the receiver that you made in the lab in a laboratory. He had the perfect frame, perfect size, 
And he also had that blazing speed and the great hands, the great ball security. And that's why. And he's helped Matt, uh, Matt Stafford and Alliance stay in some, somewhat, um, be somewhat known. But again, it's Alliance. So. But uh, yeah, Calvin Johnson, a uh, phenomenal uh, run in the decade, phenomenal player. And that's why he's the number one receiver on this decade team. Next up, my second wide receiver is the man I mentioned earlier, Julio Jones. Julio, uh, seven-time Pro Bowler, six straight. He had uh, six of those were back-to-back. -back. Uh, he has 12,125 receiving yards, which is first in the decade. And he also has 57 receiving touchdowns. And Julio is the guy who gets a lot of yards and doesn't really score a lot. Now he's been starting to score, but he's more of a yard guy. He also has 797 catches, which is third in the decade. Uh, what's his name? Second most receiving. He also got the second most receiving yards in the single season with 1,871. And he also had a Super Bowl appearance in which they lost to the Patriots, but he still did his thing. He was dominant, um, having like three tote, was it three sideline catches? It was just amazing. Julio. Again, you could argue that he's better than Calvin Johnson. He's he's like a prototype receiver too. Perfect size, nice frame, uh, great ball security. And he's got some speed to him too. And I believe, listen, yeah, he's just a phenomenal player, freak athlete, and that's why he's definitely he definitely deserves to be on this decade team. All right, next up, my third receiver, my third and final receiver. Uh, I feel like this is a no-brainer, even though it was other receiver, like receivers that you could consider on this list. But my third receiver is Antonio Brown. Um, it, currently, we know his situation, which is sad. It's sad to see him go out this way. But before that, let's not, before that, we can't just forget that he was arguably the best receiver in the league. He is a seven-time Pro Bowler. Six of those were back-to-back. He has 11,263 yards, which was second in the decade. And he also had 75 receiving touchdowns, which was second in the decade, and along with 837 catches, again, which was second in the decade. And four straight first-team All-Pro all pro nominations. And Antonio Brown was arguably the best receiver in the league. He's known for he's He didn't have the desired size, but he proved people wrong with his quickness and his uh his per, like precise route running he's to me he was the best route runner in the game uh his routes were just crisp his routes were crisp and clean he would he would beat any corner he could also go up and get the ball but also his uh sideline toe tap ability was subpar like nobody else like nobody else was on his level in terms of toe tap uh toe tap swag as nate brothers calls it but his toe tap ability was just amazing, which helped them win the game against Green Bay a couple years ago. Um, AB, definitely one of the best receivers of this decade, and that's why he is a third receiver on this list. Again, it was hard to pick receivers, but um, yeah, because I feel like it's a lot of guys who could who deserve to be on here, but I feel like these three were just a better choice, and Antonio. Like I said, Antonio Brown, um, excellent player. Just sad to see to see how he's going out. Next up, we have tight end. And I feel this is a no-brainer. We have Rob Gronkowski. Gronk is a three-time Super Bowl champion, five-time Pro Bowler, four-time first-team All-Pro. Uh, he also, he now stat-wise, he has 521 catches, uh, 7,861 yards, uh, he hauled in 79 touchdowns, which was first in the decade. And he's the 2014 comeback player of the year. Gronk, uh, he had some issues being healthy. But at the same time, when he was on the field, he was dominant. He was he's he was the best receiver for New England. Right, This whole decade, he was New England's best receiver. Now, Gronk, is, he's a matchup nightmare. It's like no matter who you put on him, Gronk's most likely just going to go up and get it over him. But Gronk was good on the run too. Um, he was good after the catch too, like run after the catch. Gronk was a, Gronk was a beast. He could go up and get it. A red zone threat, red zone nightmare, which is why he is the tight end on this decade team. Uh, next up, uh, we're going to get into the O-line. So my first tackle is Joe Thomas of the Browns. 
He had uh, seven straight Pro Bowls, five-time first-team All-Pro, and he played every game until 2017, where he did play mo some of the season in 2017, but he got injured. And Thomas was, uh, he was, it was like trying to get past Thomas was like trying to get through a brick wall. He wasn't, he wasn't letting anybody get past him. He had a nice punch to him, nice footwork. And that's why he's a tackle on this decade team. Uh, the next tackle we have is Tyron Smith of the Cowboys. Uh, he has seven straight Pro Bowls, two time first team All Pro, and was on the 2011 All Rookie team. Now, Tom, uh, Tyron Smith, he's a he has great size. He's that's like the tackle you build in the factory. He has nice size to him, great arms. He night like same thing with Tom. It's like a nice punch, and he was not letting up. He was not letting any QB uh, defensive end lay a finger on his QB. And that's that's why I feel he's definitely one of the best tackles of this decade. Next, so we're moving into the interior linemen. First at guard, we have Marshall Yonder. Uh, he's an eight-time Pro Bowler. Six of those were back-to-back. -back. He's a Super Bowl champion on that 2012 team. And he's a two-time first-team All-Pro. Uh, Thomas, mm, not Thomas, Marshall Yonder, uh, he's a great lineman. He's been the best uh, interior guard for most of this decade. And has great his uh, great IQ with his, uh, with his hands. This great use of hands is what helped uh, is what helped the Ravens win that Super Bowl in 2012. Next up, uh, another guard position is Zach Martin. Uh, he's a six-time Pro Bowler. He's made the Pro Bowl every year. Uh, Three-time first-team All-Pro and was the 2014 was on the 2014 All-Rookie team. <laughs> now Zach Martin. He's been a great lineman. He's been he's arguably been like the best guard since he entered the league. But he's the uh again, like I was saying, he's not or earlier, he getting past him is not gonna be easy. He's not gonna let up and um has has great hands. He uses his hands uh smartly uh smart and um yeah, he's his footwork is good with his uh quick he has a low quick speed. And that's why he's the other guard next to Marshall Yonder on this team. Next up at the center position, I have Alex Mack, um, six-time Pro Bowler. Four of those were straight, and he's or uh, back-to-back. -back. And he's uh, he had a Super Bowl appearance against the Patriots, but uh, they lost. And he was a key he was a key reason to the Falcons getting to the Super Bowl. He was not allowing pressure on. He was not allowing pressure on uh, Matt Ryan, which helped keep the pocket clean and helped Matt Ryan win MVP. All right, we're going to move to the defensive side real quick. Or uh, not real quick, but we're going to move to the defensive side. As my first defensive tackle is going to be Aaron Donald. He's a, He has six straight Pro Bowls, which was every year of his career. He's a four-time first-team All-Pro. Uh, twenty. He is 2014 Defensive Rookie of the Year and All Rookie Team, and he's back. He's the current uh, reigning and back-to-back -back Defensive Player of the Year in 2017 and 2018. Uh, he, stat wise, he has 72 sacks, 311 tackles, 173 QB hits, 15 forced turnovers, and he had a Super Bowl appearance last year when he was the he was a key part in that. He was the main guy on defense as he broke the single season defensive tackle sack, sack record with 20 and a half. And he almost broke the single season sack rec record in general, held by Michael Strahan. Aaron Donald is a force and his, his just his, um, like his size and his work ethic was just like, and his mentality, he's just, it's just, it's hard to go up against him. Like, Last year, he got double teamed on more than 70% of the plays of the snaps, and he was still, and he still ended up getting 20 and a half sacks. So, you know, if you're going up against Aaron Donald, you're going to have a hard day at work. Next to my other defensive tackle is Calais Campbell. He's a five-time Pro Bowler, uh, one first-team All-Pro appearance. Uh, Stat-wise, he has 81 sacks. 624 tackles 
Uh, and has also had 185 QB hits and has for, uh, forced 12 fumbles. Uh, Calais Campbell is... He's a dominant player. He has great size. His arm, He has uh, big arms. He has a nice punch to it. He has a nice punch off the line. And he has, does a great job of getting pressure on the QB, whether it's getting in his face or taking him down. And that's why he was the mayor of Saxonville in 2017. Yeah, Calais Campbell has been dominant since uh, Arizona. And that's why he's on this decade team. I feel he's definitely... Philly is definitely the best defensive tackle not named Aaron Donald in this decade. Next up, we're going to defensive end. And the first defensive end I have is J.J. White. Uh, five, he's a five-time pro bowler and also a five-time first-team all-pro. Now, stat-wise, he collected 96 sacks, sacks, which was third in the decade. Also has 479 tackles and 265 QB hits. Um, he also forced 23 f fumbles and accolade. Now accolades, he collected, he has, he has a three-time defensive player of the year, 2012, 2014, and 2015. And also on offense, he caught, uh, three touchdowns at tight end on a couple trick plays. But, um, yeah, JJ White is a dominant player. Um, uh, his, he has a great work ethic. His workouts are his workouts are crazy. Uh, he's getting he has nice uh speed, nice quickness off the line, and just know if you're going up against Houston, uh, watch out for number ninety nine. Next up at the other defensive end position, we have Khalil Mack, currently of the Chicago Bears. Um, he has now he is a five time Pro Bowler, uh, three time First Team All Pro. And is the 2016 Defensive Player of the Year. Khalil Mack is an unstoppable force as he has 61 and a half sacks, 397 tackles, 116 QB hits, and 24 fumbles. But he can also drop back in coverage a little bit as he has two interceptions. Like I say, he's an unstoppable force. Trying to block him is like trying to stop a freight train. It's just, you just better throw up a prayer. And hope you trip, send the house on him. Have the whole old line just block him. Like he's definitely been a dominant player. He's definitely uh, to me, he's the best edge in the game. And um, yeah, that's why he's the other defensive end on this team. All right, we're gonna move to the outside linebacker position. As the first, or yeah, we're gonna move to the linebacker position. As the first linebacker is the outside linebacker. His name is Von Miller. Eight-time Pro Bowler, uh, three-time first-team All-Pros. Uh, he's a 2011 Defensive Rookie of the Year. He's a Super Bowl champ and was the Super Bowl MVP that year. Um, uh, again, trying to stop Vaughn Miller is a lot of work. It's not going to be easy. Like Trying to stop Vaughn Miller one-on-one, you're going to have a hard day at work. Like I said earlier, he, it's just going to be... It's gonna be hard to near impossible, as he as he collected 106 sacks, which was first in the decade. Uh, 496 tackles. He also has 135 tackles for loss, and he hit the QB 216 times, as 26 forced fumbles and two interceptions. Now Vaughn Miller, he's more of an edge, but I feel like he's uh, better at coverage than Khalil Mack. I feel Von Miller can drop back in coverage if he wants, but he's just a bet. He's a better edge rusher. He's great at getting pressure on the QB, and that's why he's at this outside linebacker position. Next up, we're gonna have we're going to the middle linebacker position, as my middle linebacker is gonna be Bobby Wagner. Now he's arguably the best linebacker in the league. Uh, he has six straight Pro Bowls. Uh, he's a four-time first-team All-Pro. He's a Super Bowl champion. You know, stat-wise, he collected 1,140 tackles, uh, 58 tackles for loss. He's jumped up and snagged 10 interceptions, forced five fumbles, and has 19 and a half sacks. Now, Wagner, he's been the general for the Seahawks team for a while, and he's still the general now. He's holding the... So in that Seahawks team now, 
shut, uh, as he's shutting down the middle of the field. And just know if you're a receiver and you're going across that field, you better watch out. And if you're a quarterback, you better you better watch out too. So he'll, um, he'll probably it will get an interception. He'll most likely get an interception. It's yeah, going up against Bobby Wagner. It's going to be hard due to his IQ. He yeah, has great IQ, and yeah, he's just, he can be all over the uh, field. And that's why he's and yeah, he's just been elite since day one. So that's why he's a linebacker on this team. Next up to the outside linebacker position, I have Luke Keekley of the Carolina Panthers. Uh, he has seven straight Pro Bowls. He's a five-time first-team All-Pro. Uh, he was the 2012 Defensive Rookie of the Year and the 2013 Defensive Player of the Year. As in this decade, he's collected 1,121 1, tackles, 75 tackles for loss, 18 interceptions, uh, and he's also forced seven fumbles and has 12 and a half sacks. And he's made a Super Bowl appearance, although he fell short to Von Miller and his Broncos. But Lee Keekley, again, like like I said, to me, he's the best middle linebacker in the game. His IQ is amazing. Right? He'll, he'll know the offensive play before the snap's off, and then the whole play will just be dead. So if you're going up against Lee Keekley, just know uh, you got to find a way to outsmart him. Like Luke Keekley is a dominant force. He's holding like same with Bobby Wagner. He's holding down this Panthers defense. So if you're going up against Luke Keekley, just know you have to outsmart him. Next up, we're going to move to the secondary. As the first corner on this list is going to be Richard Sherman. Uh, he's a five-time Pro Bowler, three-time First Team All-Pro, and he's a Super Bowl champ uh, on the same team with Bobby Wagner. Uh, he's he collected 475 tackles. He's got 35 interceptions, which le which leads the decade. It's first in the decade. Uh, he's also had he also has 114 passes defended. And Sherman's just been locked down. Now this is a guy who's defied the odds and has uh, silenced the haters. Because coming out of college, he I mean he was a receiver in college, but then he switched to corner and. A lot of teams were skeptical on him playing corner until Seattle took a chance on him in the fifth round. And now he's been the best corner of the decade. He's been shutting he's been shutting receivers down left and right. And just know if you throw it up to Richard Sherman. And he's the best trash talker, too. He's a trash talker who lets his uh, play do the talking. You know, uh, uh, just know if you're going up against Richard Sherman and you throw it his way, you better say a quick prayer. All right, next up, the second cornerback we have on this team is Darrell Revis of the New York Jets, or, uh, yeah, was on the New York Jets. But Darrell Revis, uh, he's a five-time Pro Bowler, three-time first-team All-Pro. He's a Super Bowl champ on the New England Patriots team that beat the Seahawks. Uh, he's, he's collected 15 interceptions, has 298 tackles, and he also has 75 passes defended. Revis, we all know it was called Revis Island. Because if you were on if you were on Revis Island, you weren't getting any help. You weren't getting the ball thrown to you. You were getting you were shut down. And um, yeah, that's the thing about the Raw Revis. He's just great. Uh he is great at shutting play receivers down and making QBs regret throwing the ball his way. So it's not if you're going if you're on the Raw Revis, you're most likely not going to get the ball thrown to you. All right, next up, my third and final corner on this team is Patrick Peterson. Uh, he's, uh, he has eight straight Pro Bowls, uh, three-time first-team All-Pro, and he doesn't have a lot of interceptions because teams know not to throw to his way. Uh, yeah, like he doesn't, teams don't throw towards his way a lot, but he's, even though he's still collected 25 interceptions, he has uh, 44, 440 tackles, and he has 83 passes defended. Now, uh, Pat P, he's been he's been a great corner since entering the league, and that is a, like I said earlier, he doesn't have a lot of interceptions because teams know not to test his side as much. So that respect that they have for him, knowing that he's a top corner, that's why he's been one of the best corners of this decade. All right, we're gonna move to the fr uh, free safety position, and for this position, I have. Earl Thomas 
Uh, he's a seven-time Pro Bowler. Five of those were back-to-back. -back. He's a three-time first-team All-Pro. And he's also a Super Bowl champion. He's on, on that team with Bobby Wagner and um, Richard Sherman. Now, stat-wise, he collected 30 interceptions, which was third in the decade. Uh, 733 tackles and has defended 71 passes. Sure, um, Thomas has been a lockdown safety. Like he has that nice, he has that center. He's a great center fielder. He has a nice sideline, the sideline ability. And he, he's a ball hog. He'll go up and get and uh snag the ball out the air. And he'll just be and the quarterback would just be sitting there like, oh man, I can't believe I yeah. Oh, the like he'll make somebody think he's open, and then Thomas will be there and be like, nope, I'm right here. And Thomas has just been, he's been a dominant safety. And uh, that's why he's, that's why I chose him as a free safety on this team. Next up, we have the strong safety position. And this one, I'm going to have to go to go with Eric Berry. Now, Berry, he's not currently on the team right now, but in his prime, he, had, he was a five-time pro bowler, uh, three-time first-team all-pro. He was the 2015 Comeback Player of the Year after uh, having missing the previous season due to cancer. He's collected 14 interceptions, has 448 tackles, and he's defended 51 passes. Now, Barry, he's a, again, he was a dominant safety. He had that sideline to sideline ability, but he could also uh, come down on the line and uh, make tackles, like uh, stop the run. He was a dominant uh safety. He was the and he was the he was the leader on that Chiefs team, on that Chiefs defense. And that's why I feel he's definitely the, one of the better safeties of this uh decade. All right, we're done with the defense, so we're going to move on to the special teams here. As the kicker I uh went with was again no-brainer Justin Tucker. Uh he's a three-time pro bowler, uh three-time first team all-pro. He's a Super Bowl champ as a rookie on that 2012 team, uh, and his field goal percentage is 90.8%, which is the most accurate in NFL history. Uh, his PAT percentage is 99%, so he's pretty much making every PAT. And his longest field goal was a 61-yarder. Now, Justin Tucker, um, he's been the best kicker in the league ever since entering the league. Um, now, if you Raven, any Ravens fans out there, y'all remember the days where Tucker would win the games for us, well, where he make all the points. And um, yeah, Tucker's just been phenomenal, great leg, and he's definitely a Hall of Famer for sure. Next up, we're going to the punter position, and I went with Johnny Hecker. Uh, he's a four-time Pro Bowler. Three of those were back-to-back. -back. Um, he's a four-time first-team All-Pro. And he made a Super Bowl appearance last year on the Rams team. Um, he now his stats: he has tw twenty-eight thousand six hundred punt yards. Forty-seven. He's averaging forty-seven yards a punt, and his longest punt was a seventy-eight yarder. Now, J Hecker, he's been a good punter. Like I said, he's been in the Pro Bowl a lot. But uh, what's the name? Bill Belichick before the Super Bowl said that Johnny Hecker was a weapon. And if you're a punter and somebody's calling you the greatest coach of all time, called you a weapon. You're doing something right. And to be honest, though, Belichick has a point. Like, if you're a punter, uh, you can you can determine how the next drive goes depending on where you uh, place them at. And for Hecker to be doing a, a good job of that and be called a weapon, he's a good punter, and that's why he's on this team. Last but not least, we have the return specialist. And there's no other return specialist I would have on this team other than Cordell Patterson. He's a three-time Pro Bowler as a return man, uh, two-time first-team All-Pro. Uh, he's a Super Bowl champion with the New England Patriots. Uh, now, stat-wise, this is punts and punt returns and kick returns combined. So he has 6,110 return yards, seven return touchdowns, which is first in a decade. Uh, 30, he's averaging 38.9 yards per return. And his longest return was 109 yards. Now, Cordell Patterson, he's been a great return man, great weapon for teams as a return specialist. Still on teams getting paid as a as a return man. He's doing a good job of it. He's the he's this generation's next great return. Uh, I feel like Cordell Patterson, he's next in the line of great return men because you had 
Dante Hall, jo Devin Hester, Josh Cribbs, now Cordell Patterson. Man, he's just been great. Like, his sense of direction is great. And that's why if you kick the ball to him, just make sure, try and make sure it's a uh, touchback. All right, that is it for this NFL uh, Decade team. And uh, I just want to do you a quick little shout out. Now, I just want to say thank you to all the love and support you guys have shown on this channel. We started this channel in uh, early this year. And now we're growing. We're, we're close to 100 subscribers. So if y'all could like tell friends, family, whatever uh, about um, this YouTube channel, get them the support. It would be truly appreciated. But I love hearing the feedback from you guys and interacting with you guys. And I'm just thankful for for all you all you guys, all the support. And um, yeah, we're going to continue in 2020. We're going to have some more content. And uh, yeah, that's well, that's going to be it for this episode and for this year. So uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your post notifications. And I'll talk to you guys next time.